My name is Yasemi Somuncu. I am rather a new member of the Passive House family, yet I have had the privilege to meet great contributors. I believe that I took the right step to be part of this big family, and I hope to be a contributor like my colleagues. Dear guests, at this fourth session of Passive House conference within Zero Build 20, we will be presenting Passive House design tools, methods, and certification. It is a broad subject, no doubt. Yet, we would like to sum up the concepts and give an overview of the latest developments in the sector. Besides myself, speakers of this session are Mr. David Edwards, developer of Design PH from Passive House Institute, Mr. Dragos Arnautu from Passive House Institute, he is an architect and coordinator of the Design PH development team, and Mrs. Zümrüt Aslan Özcan, architect and partner of Ekodinam Mimarlık. Our session is going to be 90 minutes. The first 70 minutes are allocated for our speakers' presentations. The discussion part, which is going to be around 20 minutes, is going to take place at the end of the session, after all presentations are completed. We kindly request you to write your questions to the chat box at your screen, so at the end we can share questions with our speakers. Should there be any questions left unanswered due to time restrictions, you can direct these questions to speakers through their LinkedIn addresses, which are available on forum website. You can follow simultaneous translation at this session in stream too. Before we start, may I kindly remind all our participants to keep their microphones muted so that there will be no background noise during the presentations. I will be the first speaker of the session. I am a key expert on energy efficient buildings and districts. I am waiting patiently my exam results to be soon a certified passive house designer and consultant. I graduated from Middle East Technical University Faculty of Architecture in 1994. After my graduation, I developed many projects and built most of them uh, from small scale to large scale complexes in Mimaria architecture. In 2002, I received my master's degree on environment and energy from the Architectural Association School of Architecture in London. Between 2012 and 2020, I carried out EU-supported Need for B, Bricker and New Generation projects, as well as NextGAM projects supported by the Islamic Development Bank as a senior researcher at Özeyn University Energy and Mountain Economy Center. I am currently key expert in the Energy Efficiency in Schools project funded by Europe Aid to support the Energy Efficiency Roadmap of Turkish community in Cyprus. I have many joint articles on completed and ongoing projects and user manuals for the dissemination of the completed projects. Today, I'm going to present building envelope in passive houses. Actually, uh, this session uh, seems to be quite uh, a mixed session. So in my presentation, I will try to touch uh, in small uh, bits uh, to all the presentations so uh, our listeners can uh, I get an idea about how broad the uh, sector is but in fact, how they are uh, intersecting each other. Certification systems for buildings date all the way back to Romans, as documented by Vitruvius in the Architectura, widely known today as the Ten Books on Architecture. During the first century before Christ, Vitruvius explored structures in terms of their solidness, usefulness, and beauty, firmitas, utilitas, and venustas, and suggested a series of guidelines for both buildings and cities. Most Roman cities were built in these premises many of which are still intact and beautiful, although most are not in use by public. In recent times, more comprehensive certification systems were offered by different organizations in different countries. 
One of the first organizations for this was the American Society for Heating, Refrigeration and Air Conditioning, ASHRAE, founded in 1894 to focus on energy efficiency, building systems, refrigeration, indoor air quality and sustainability within industry. In recent times, additional certification systems for buildings were introduced by British Building Research Establishment, Environmental Assessment Methodology, BREEN, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, LEED, and Passive House. Since then, many other certification systems have been introduced to the market, reaching to hundreds of different systems in use. Today, most of certification systems are implemented at national levels, with only a few being considered at the international level. Uh, this is actually a chart uh, which I had developed approximately six years ago. Uh, so, of course, today uh, most of these uh, certifications have some other uh, parameters for sure. But in general, to give an idea, uh, to uh, see uh, how difficult it is to compare these different certification systems around the world, uh, I would like to show this in one uh, paper slide. Uh, so some certification systems have approach on energy, some have holistic approach to emphasize on environment, and they have several categories like construction phase, economy, energy performance, indoor environment, innovations, and others. And then also they have, these have subcategories. And when you look at this chart, you see uh, how the ways uh, all these different categories are different from each other. So at the end of the day, it becomes quite difficult to get a, a tangible uh, comparison chart. And today, uh, of course, our uh, conference is on uh, passive houses, and uh, we are going to concentrate on passive house. So uh, as I explained at the beginning of my uh, speech, my presentation is about the envelopes of passive houses. Passive house is a tried and true construction concept that can be applied by anyone, anywhere. Passive houses allow for space heating and cooling related energy savings of up to 90% compared with typical building stock and over 75% compared to average new builds. Passive houses use less than one and a half liter of oil or one and a half cubic meter of gas to heat one square meter of living space for a year, substantially less than common low energy buildings. Vast energy savings have been demonstrated in warm climates where typical buildings also require active cooling. Passive houses may efficient, make efficient use of the sun, internal heat sources and heat recovery, rendering conventional heating systems unnecessary throughout even the coldest of winters. During warmer months, passive houses make use of passive cooling techniques such as strategic shaping, shading to keep comfortably cool. Passive houses are praised for the high level of comfort they offer. Internal surface temperatures vary little from indoor air temperatures, even in the face of extreme outdoor temperatures. Special windows and a building envelope consisting of a highly insulated roof and floor slab, as well as highly insulated exterior walls, keep the desired warmth in the house or undesirable heat out. A ventilation system impermissibly supplies constant fresh air, making for superior air quality without unpleasant drafts. A highly efficient heat recovery unit allows for the heat contained in the exhaust air to be re reused. For a building to be considered a passive house, it must be meeting uh, some criteria. And uh, just to line these uh, very uh, briefly, the passive heating energy demand is not to exceed 15 kilowatts uh, hour per square meter or net living space per year or 10 watt per square meter peak demand. In climates where active cooling is needed, the space cooling energy demand requirements roughly matches the heat demand requirements with an additional allowance for dehumidification. The renewable primary energy demand is another important requirement. The total energy to be used for all domestic applications must not exceed 60 kilowatt hour per square meter for treated floor area per year for passive house classic. In terms of air tightness, a maximum of 0.6 air changes per hour at 50 pascals pressure is verified with an on-site pressure test. Thermal comfort must be met for all living areas during winter as well as in summer, with not more than 10% of the hours in a given year over 25 grad Celsius. 
Passive house buildings are planned, optimized, and verified with the Passive House Planning Package, PHPP. Although the previously mentioned criteria are achieved through intelligent design and implementation of the five passive house principles, thermal bridge-free design, superior windows, ventilation with heat recovery, quality insulation, and airtight construction. All opaque buildings, components of the exterior envelope or the house must be well insulated. For most cool temperate climates, this means a heat transfer coefficient of 0.15 watt uh, square meter Kelvin at the most. In other words, a maximum of 0.15 watts per degree or temperature difference and per square meter of exterior surface are lost. The window frames must be well insulated and fitted with low E glazing filled with argon or krypton to prevent heat transfer. The most cool temperate climates, this means a U value of 0.80 watts square meter Kelvin or less, with G values around 50%. All edges, corners, connections, and penetrations must be planned and executed with great care so that thermal bridges can be avoided. Thermal bridges which cannot be avoided must be minimized as far as possible. Uncontrolled leakage through gaps must be smaller than 0.6 of the total house volume per hour during a pressure test of 50 Pascal. Efficient heat recovery ventilation is key, allowing for a good indoor air quality and saving energy. The passive house, at least 75% of the heat from the exhaust air is transferred to the fresh air, again by means of heat exchanger. So actually we have uh, certain uh, rules uh, which can be uh, followed really uh, basically. Uh, they are simple and uh, very efficient. Uh, we have the green line. So airtight layer seamlessly encloses the heated space. It should be possible to follow the line with a pencil without any interruption. And then we have the yellow area. The thermal bridge-free insulation layer should consist of components with minimal thermal conductivity. As I mentioned previously, uh, superior windows are very important in passive houses. The aim is to get, achieve uh, a U value less than 0.8 watts square meter Kelvin. So this means that we can use any material. It can be a high quality uh, PV, it can be aluminum, it can be wood. It's according to the selection of the architect and the designers. And of course, according to the climatic zones, whether the building is being uh, designed and being constructed in a central European climate, warmer climate or colder climate, we uh, add the uh, number of the uh, glass, uh, we select the, uh, the uh, what is going to be between the glasses, and of course we are going to make the ceiling of the uh, window frames accordingly. And also, as you see at the left side, uh, I just uh, placed a few details, uh, drawings, uh, these also very too. Would we like to put the window frame in the middle of the wall? Would we like to put it on the top of the insulation? We have to calculate all the different uh, results of uh, these decisions from the very beginning of the design, of course. And also, all these will de depend if the building is a new building, if it's a renovation, if it's a building with cultural heritage uh, parameters. Another important point I would like to mention is uh, the lower door pressure test, uh, which is performed at a certain uh, time uh, within the construction. Uh, with the lower uh, door uh, pressure test, uh, we are able to uh, find out if the construction uh, was uh, planned, uh, went as it was planned, or there were some uh, problems due to workmanship or uh, some other issues. And uh, these leaks uh, can be detected by the blower door test pressure. Uh, the uh, photos are uh, from uh, our blower door uh, pressure test, uh, which we had performed a few years ago in the uh, international uh, language uh, building at the Özyen University. And the uh, blower door test was uh, performed by Turkish company Eko Mimarlık. 
Here I added a few uh, photos uh, from uh, a uh, house, passive house uh, in Belgium, Strambouche. Actually, uh, this uh, construction took place at the same time we were uh, constructing uh, the educational building in Özyen University. And uh, Mr. Dominic Derame uh, is both the designer, uh, the contractor, the worker, uh, and the end user of this building. And uh, after the building was completed, he has been uh, collecting uh, real-time uh, measurements uh, since the last four years. So he has a, a very a good archive on the performance of the building. And uh, this building is also uh, can be visited uh, during the uh, passive house tours or, uh, at certain times of the year. And you can see these photos, so the thickness of the uh, insulation used on the floor. Uh, the detailings uh, on the walls, how uh, air tightness is important and what kind of materials uh, we use to uh, get the air tightness uh, of the building. Actually, uh, so far I have tried to uh, give you a brief uh, view of the uh, concepts or the uh, idea behind the uh, passive house and how we can design and we can build. So uh, this can be uh, any kind of construction. It can be solid, it can be timber, it can be steel, it can be mixed. And uh, we can uh, use the passive house uh, standard in any building typology. Uh, here I uh, place some photos of the very recent and very uh, good examples of the passive houses around the world. Uh, one of them is the uh, Metropole Grand Normandie, in the municipality building in, uh, in France. Uh, Klinikum Frankfurt Hurst is a hospital in Germany uh, and uh, this is a 60-story uh, social uh, housing and uh, private housing multi-mixed use uh, residence in Vancouver, Canada. Actually, uh, I would like to sum up my presentation uh, with the advantages of the uh, passive house envelope. Reduced cold air infiltration in winter, reducing heating energy use. Reduced warm air infiltration in summer, reducing humidity and cooling demand. Reduced air movement within insulation layer, enhancing its performance. Reduced possibility of moisture and condensation damage to envelope, resulting in more durable and higher quality buildings. Reduced noise infiltration, enhancing calmness of indoor environment. Reduced drafts and higher interior surface temperature, eliminating structural damage from condensation and mold, and providing higher thermal comfort. Thank you so much, and we will get your questions at the end of the session. So our uh, second presentation uh, will be performed by Mr. Dave Edwards and Dragos Arnauto. Uh, I would like to give a brief uh, information about uh, Mr. David Edwards. Uh, David Edwards is the developer of Design PH in Passive House Institute. Uh, David Edwards initially studied physics at the University of Durham and later architecture. While studying for a master's in architecture, sustainability and design, he was introduced to the passive house planning package and was quickly impressed by the attention to detail and openness of the calculations. Shortly afterwards, he took the exam to become a certified passive house consultant. Before joining PHI, David worked in various UK architectural practices in Nottingham and London, and also the Netherlands, specializing main housing. Since 2012, he has worked for the Passive House Institute as the creator and developer of Design PH working remotely as the virtual office of PHI in London. He is engaged in the ongoing research and development of new features for Design PH and has regularly presented papers at international passive house conferences. In the UK, David has provided professional Design PH training for the AECB, Carbon Light Program, and in-house CPD for architectural practices. He has also been a regular guest tutor teaching PHPP and design PH to students at UCL, and also delivering workshops at various UK universities participating in the Passive House Plus student competition. Today, Mr. Edwards and Mr. Arnauto are going to present 
Design PH C Dimensional Passive House Design Tool. State is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can hear me clearly. Um, and please let me know if I speak too fast, as English is my native language. And um, I hope the translators can keep up. OK. So I'm going to talk to you about um, Design PH, uh, the 3D Passive House Design Tool from the Passive House Institute. <clears throat> So Design PH is a plugin for Trimble SketchUp, and hopefully many of you are aware um, SketchUp is a very popular uh, 3D drawing package. Uh, it's very accessible, has quite a, a quick learning curve. Uh, we find it very intuitive, and it works very well for the, the purpose of uh, building and analyzing an energy model. So Design PH allows you to test um, and design passive house projects in 3D and then import them into the Passive House planning package. So Design PH and PHPP work together as a, as a complete tool for designing and analyzing your Passive House projects. So the, um, the PHPP is the, um, the tool, the highly accurate spreadsheet-based energy modeling tool from the Passive House Institute, which has been around for over 15 years now and very successful very well regarded in its accuracy. Um, it was developed, started by Wolfgang Feist, uh, based on the, the models of the, the first Passive House um, in Kronenstein, Darmstadt. Um, <clears throat> and it's been uh, gradually refined over the years and, and new features added. However, um, the PHPP is a spreadsheet and therefore to, f to complete your model in PHPP, you need to enter a lot of data about your building. So Design PH can save you a lot of time and effort uh, by automatically entering all of the geometric data into the PHPP after you've built your model. Uh, you can also run an some preliminary analysis in Design PH to get an idea of the building's performance. So Design PH can be used for many different building types. Here are a few examples models um, and at the end of the presentation my colleague Dragos will um, discuss in further detail some example projects that he has worked on the certification of. <clears throat> so the workflow of Design PH is you, you draw your building envelope and, and the context if necessary in SketchUp. So all you need to run an analysis is a single skin uh, model. So SketchUp is very well suited for that because it's not a BIM package. It doesn't have constructions, it just has surfaces. And this simplicity is actually very useful for, for analyzing an energy model. Uh, secondly, you should set the climate. This is very important. Um, <clears throat> and once you have your 3D model, you can assign area groups. And this is a term that we that comes from PHPP. Um, it's essentially a way of assigning the thermal boundary conditions to each surface, whether it's a reduction factor should be applied or not. Um, after that, we assign material properties. Then we define the treated floor area. The, tr the treated floor area is another a term from PHPP. It's the particular way of measuring the, the usable internal floor space that we uh, take account of for the uh, energy balance uh, calculations. After this, we can run an analysis and, and look at how well our, our design is performing. Um, perhaps make a few changes, check the result again, and then export to the PHPP for a full verification, add further details about mechanical services, and so on. Um, <clears throat> so this is an overview of the user interface of DesignPH. So firstly, we have the ske standard SketchUp drawing tools, um, and DesignPH adds uh, some additional uh, menu bars, various tools here, um, and also adds a number of items to the context menu. So when you right click or control click on part of the model, um, different actions will become available depending on what is selected. At the top left of your uh, screen, after you run analysis, you will see some results in the dashboard. This gives you a, a quick overview. And then there's also a dialogue window, which has a great deal of detail in it. The first sheet, the overview, gives you the energy balance graph. So this is the balance of the, the heat losses and gains. 
the red bar here is the specific annual heat demand, and this is what we compare to the 15 kilowatt hours per meter squared per year target for Passive House. Um, <clears throat> and then in the other tabs, there are places to see much more details about the uh, the um, surfaces and windows and so on in the model, assign properties, uh, define your libraries of materials and components and so on. <clears throat> so Design VH can and do a lot for you automatically. Um, all you need to do to start getting some results is actually draw your model um, and set the climate essentially. And then you, you can run the analysis in automatic mode and it will detect whether the surfaces are, um, it will automatically assign the area groups for you, depending on the uh, adjacencies of the surfaces. And based on that, it can actually assign automatically a U value. So you can actually get uh, some kind of en um, prediction of the energy performance without assigning any properties apart from the climate. So this allows you to test models very quickly. <clears throat> so back to that uh, overview of the workflow, these three items in red, the assigning area groups, assigning the material properties, and defining the treated floor area can all be done automatically in the first iteration of your uh, analysis. So here is a, a chart of the workflow. Um, simply create the model, use the default specifications, run analysis, and at this stage we could export to the PHPP. Or we can go into further details within design PH and actually start entering more precise properties and refine the design within uh, SketchUp and draw the treated floor area more precisely and so on. So in order to refine the model um, and make the, the prediction more accurate, um, <clears throat> in Design PH we have the full library of the PHI certified building components and climates. It's all available to uh, use in your analysis. You can also enter user-defined specifications for the, the, the frame types, the glazing types, opaque co components such as walls, roofs, floors, and so on, and even thermal bridges. Uh, and you can also, of course, manually override the, the automatically assigned area groups for special situations. Um, for example, when you have um, a uh, sloping site, um, or perhaps you have a, a very deep green roof of a part of your building, which would have a sheltering effect, you know, a partly buried building, this kind of situation. Okay. Um, and now I'll just give a brief introduction to some of the uh, helpful tools within DesignPH. Uh, so we have three different rendering modes that give you visual feedback on your design. So when you run the analysis, it automatically colors the surfaces red, and this is the re render by area groups mode. So it's giving you visual feedback that the area groups have been assigned. Um, the, the orangey red means the roof, bright red means walls, and so on. Uh, and this mode also gives you some indication about reversed surfaces. When you see this texture on the outside, that helps you to know you should flip those surfaces around in the SketchUp model. And it will also give you um, a hint that the thermal envelope is, com is complete, that there are no gaps, anything like that. So it tries to give you a lot of help as you're going along, going along to avoid mistakes. Um, <clears throat> The next render mode is render by heat loss. So this is, this is equivalent to the view you get from a, a thermal imaging camera. So um, the brightest colors are more heat loss um, per meter squared and the, the purple end are less heat loss. So this can help you spot weak points in the building fabric to try and achieve that continuous thermal envelope. Um, and finally, we have the render by component types. So this gives a different color for each component type. So if you, it helps you to visually optimize the model, reduce complexity, because every, every time you have a junction between different construction types, that means there's a thermal bridge that you might need to solve. And it can also help reduce costs, of course, having reducing the number of different construction types. Um, <clears throat> another useful tool is the, the highlight select tool. So, um, in this slide, we can see a table, which is a list of all the areas 
which were found in the model. And um, when you hover over each one, it will highlight the corresponding area in the model, which helps you to cross-reference and, and make changes if you need to. And you can also enter your own descriptive names for each um, surface or window or thermal bridge and so on. And the tool works the other way around as well. If you select the um, surface in the model, it will highlight that row in the table to help you find it. OK. Now I'm going to give a little bit more detail on one of the, the newer features that was added in Design PH2, which was released uh, just over a year ago. Um, and this is the um, improvements in the shading analysis. Uh, <clears throat> So Design PH now does a full 3D ray trace shading detection, um, which allows us to generate um, a shading mask. That's this diagram at the top right of the slide. So this is um, equivalent to a view out of the window showing the shading objects in gray. Um, it is a kind of distorted view because it's 3D squashed onto a, a 2D surface. Uh, and the little orange and red dots are the, the sun path. So this is a an almost south facing window out uh, for the northern hemisphere, of course. Um, <clears throat> so, this shading analysis allows us to calculate, pre calculate shading factors uh, for each window. Uh, there's one summer shading factor and one winter shading factor, and these are exported to the PHPP. So, that's another way that it uh, saves you data entry in PHPP because using PHPP alone, you would have to manually look at the situation of each window and work out what the dominant shading effect objects are and enter um, distance to them to calculate the shading factors. Uh, <clears throat> so in this example, we can see the, uh, the different shading effects on this upper and lower casement. Um, so in the top, the, the shading mask at the top, um, we can see how the, the the sun path is affected by the shading. So the the, sum, the summer sun path is the top of the diagram. So the sun gets higher in the sky. That's uh, and then the winter sun path is shown by the the bottom curve. <clears throat> and of course, spring and uh, autumn are in the middle. Uh, so we can see that the the direct radiation at noon would be cut out by the the reveal of this window because it's quite deep. So this, this tool can help you uh, look at the shading situations, perhaps assess where overheating might be a risk and improve or reduce the shading if necessary. Um, <clears throat> and in, additionally, on the, the shading sheet, it, um, you can even look at the receiver radiation per window on an hourly basis. So we have these two graphs which show you the unshaded radiation, which is the total radiation available in that direction and then below we show the shaded radiation so that's the actual radiation received on the window after the shading has been taken into account um, on the bottom diagram we can see how um, the shading um, <clears throat> shading objects in this scene have cut out a lot of the direct radiation so the direct radiation is the orange in this diagram orange and yellow are the is what's coming from the direction of the sun, essentially. And the blue is the isotropic radiation, so that's the diffuse radiation which is coming from all directions in the sky. Okay, um, and here we have a, another example showing uh, how, how mountains would appear on the, uh, the shading mass diagram. So um, this tool lets us look at uh, much more complex shading situations than was possible before. Um, a couple more examples here is a, a courtyard situation, which would have been difficult to enter into the PHPP without this tool. <clears throat> so here we can see very complex horizon generated by the um, surrounding buildings in the courtyard. And also here we see the, the view from a tilted window. So this is one of the windows to this basement, which is 
almost looking up directly up at the sky. So in this case, we get quite a different viewpoint from on the shading mask. And you see, even looks like the sun path has flipped around. So you have to imagine you're kind of lying on your back, looking up at the sky, and this is the view that you would get. And then the horizon has also become curved on the diagram because it's much further down. <clears throat> uh, okay, and so I'm nearly getting to the end of, of my section. Um, and this is the, the effect of looking at trees. Um, so you can see that the density of the tree is reflected in the, the shading mass diagram. Just clearly less shading from a deciduous tree where all the in winter where the leaves have been lost. Um, slightly more shading from a summer tree. So we can actually use the two different analysis runs to generate a, a shading factor for the winter and the summer case and then put those into the PHPP. Okay, <clears throat> so in summary, what is exported to the PHPP? Um, well, the large um, bulk of the, the export is the areas, the surfaces, um, all and the windows and so on, which you, all the building geometry, which you enter into the design PH. And if you draw the treaty floor area, which is recommended to get an accurate result, that's also exported. Um, and you can also assign reduction factors to the treaty floor area um, in directly in design PH to make the calculation even more accurate. These are the part of the um, <coughs> definition of how we describe treaty floor area. There are certain criteria, for example, low ceilings will reduce the amount of effective treated floor area. Um, the windows are exported with all the necessary details, the dimensions, the installation factors. This is um, how we describe when a one window is connected to another window, it reduces the, the thermal bridge uh, losses. Um, and we call this the installation factor. And in design pH, we can just assign this visually by clicking on the, the junction between two windows to say that they are connected. Um, the frame type, the glazing type, all of that is exported. It can be assigned into the IPH. Shading, as I just went through. Um, ventilation, there's also a number of ventilation parameters you can enter in design pH, the, the ventilation unit type, um, the, the ventilation volume, ceiling heights, and so on. Um, and if you enter <clears throat> any user-defined components, so if you enter pre-calculated U-values from another software, or you, there's also a U-value calculator built into DesignPH, all of that will be carried into the, design, into the PHPP. It won't be lost. And you can continue to edit that data in the PHPP if you wish. Um, we also have a selective export mode, which allows you to um, just export some of the properties from design page if you've already entered that into PHPP and you don't want to overwrite it. Um, and finally, the, the calculation methodology of, of design PH. Um, it's equivalent to the annual method in of the PHPP. So it's, PHPP is a degree day model, it's not dynamic, but it's, it's very refined and accurate. Um, and this is a snapshot of the basis of that calculation. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Dragos if you are ready. Uh, yes, sure, sure I am. Dave, can you hear me? I can hear you. Perfect. Okay, so Dragos is going to talk about some example projects which he has done the certification on. Um, so, and you, you can summarize at the end as well, Dragos. So of course. I won't, I won't come back. Uh, so hello everyone. I'm very excited to, to be here. My name is Drago Sharnotu, as uh, Yasemin and Dave already presented me. And um, besides working together with uh, David on developing uh, design PH, um, I am involved in uh, building certification. So uh, consulting and certifying buildings, real buildings, uh, brings a lot of challenges that uh, uh, we are dealing by using actually design pH. So design pH is a very reliable tool uh, when having to work on, on uh, passive house projects, on energy efficiency projects. And um, I, cho I have chosen two slides only uh, to show you two cases in which um, design pH uh, was at the backbone of the PHPP calculation. I am always comparing 
um, design PH uh, with Robin and PHPP with Batman. So for those of you who know uh, the Batman the Batman saga will know that uh, he has a smaller friend called Robin who is actually helping him every once in a while when uh, life gets very bad for Batman. So this is what Design PH is doing. He is um, calculating the shading, uh, which to do manually in an in a Excel sheet like the PHPP is a hard work. He is exporting all of the surfaces, the complicated surfaces, into the PHPP with their U values and and um, and thus simplifying everybody's life. So uh, you see, I have some gray hair here. So most of it is uh, from the era before uh, Design PH was developed uh, by, and it came from entering manually entering building geometries into PHPP. Now, luckily, I still have some normal hair left uh, to to enjoy, um, and because I switched to using Design PH, and I'm going to show you why I I made this comparison because I would like to invite you to try to calculate the shading of this building that you can see here manually uh, into the PHPP. It will be a hard job. Um, but with, uh, with Design PH, practically with one click and one setting, uh, you get to uh, enjoy the results uh, and spend some quality time with your family because uh, your wife is going to divorce you if you are going to do this manually. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, please do not uh, be offended by, by my comments. Um, so this is a, a, a simple uh, example where besides having the possibility to, um, uh, to get the results very fast, you have the possibility to improve your design, uh, your building concept by using Design PH from early on during the uh, the stages of the project, um, seeing what are the influences, the energy balance influences of your design decisions. Um, Dave, if you want to move one uh, slide uh, next, yeah, this is one is the good, the uh, another good example. So both. Both projects, even the one before and, and this one, are uh, are in Melbourne. Uh, the the Monash uh, University is um, has adopted the passive house standard, and they are building some very beautiful uh, passive house buildings. This is one of them. This is a student dormitory, um, which also has a parametric uh, shading uh, facade. Uh, that was very easy to calculate as well. And also the building geometry, which is not so very complicated, but has a lot of windows, uh, could be exported to, to PHPP very easily. So um, this is what actually I wanted to point out that design PH um, is the link between uh, the needed link between practice and, and theory, because PHPP uh, is the most reliable tool for calculating the energy balance uh, based on uh, the algorithms that have been further developed since 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when the first passive house was built. Since then, my colleagues at the Institute have been constantly improving the calculation algorithms. But in order to get such reliable uh, results, you need to actually input the data correctly into the PHPP, which for a, for a practitioner, for an architect, for an engineer, is uh, a very tough job without the help of Design PH. So Design PH is the tool that I would recommend anybody and everybody to use if they want to get a reliable and fast uh, uh, re feedback. During the design stage, the early design stage, design pitch is enough to give you um, to give you the idea of of the direction if you are going into the right direction or or not. But as you are completing and you um, come to a decision with regards to the building geometry and the window per wall ratio and all of these things, um, you can export it to PHPP 
and continue further detailing your building. So um, I will not want to, to keep you too much. Uh, this was what I had to say, and I am really looking forward to, to answering questions if there are any. And uh, with this opportunity, to thank the organizers for, for having us and, and putting this wonderful conference together. Thank you. Thank you so much for this uh, very exciting and in-depth presentation, uh, Mr. Edwards and Mr. Arnauto. Uh, actually, when we started uh, studying architecture, we uh, started with T-squares and charcoal pans. Uh, and we graduate with uh, computers, but of course their capacity was very different. And all these years, of course, uh, we have been introduced all these different softwares. Uh, and uh, we were actually limited uh, to our capability of using the software and understanding the software. Uh, but uh, through your presentation, uh, what I uh, see is that uh, it's a, a software which is uh, really um, serving to the multiple intelligence theory too. I mean, some people are, have a visual uh, intelligence, some have uh, numeric intelligence. Uh, so I believe that this is really uh, penetrating to very many designers. Thank you so much. Very exciting. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> I'd add to that. Yeah. Um, design PhD exactly was conceived by architects <laughs> for architects <laughs> to make the PAPP more Thank accessible. you so much. Uh, our third speaker is uh, Mrs. Sumit Aslan Özcan. Uh, Mrs. Özcan received her bachelor's degree in architecture from Istanbul Technical University. Since 2009, she has been working in the field of sustainable design and construction, providing green building consultancy in various types of new buildings and retrofit projects. She is a lead AP, building uh, designer and construction, green international assessor and certified puzzle house designer. In 2011, she founded Ecobina, where she continues her work as an architect and green building consultant. Today, Mrs. Özcan will be presenting Passive House and Green Building Certification System. Mrs. Özcan, state is yours. Um, okay, so this is how I share my screen or, um, sorry. Exactly, it's fine if you can just press also the uh, presentation button, that's perfect. Like this. Perfect. <laughs> no. no. A bit ago it was fine. Can you go back to the presentation? Yes, okay. Okay, so uh, thank you for the uh, presentation, Yasemin. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Zümrüt Arslan. I'm an architect based in Istanbul. I'm also lead AP, uh, as uh, Yasemin pointed out, and a certified passive house designer. And today I'm going to speak about these certification systems and their relations, although uh, a direct comparison as uh, again, as Yasemin uh, talked about in her presentation is not very uh, possible. Um, the first part of my presentation is about the definition of green building and how rating systems in general are uh, in general are uh, in general. And uh, the second part, uh, I will uh, briefly speak about lead bream and passive house. Uh, so let me start. So green building, this definition is from the World GBC's website and uh, green buildings are defined as buildings that are designed, uh, built and operated in a way to reduce their negative impacts to the uh, environment or improve the existing con con uh, conditions, uh, provide healthy indoor spaces and improve the quality of life. And um, so also there can be some green features in a building. Uh, what makes a building green. Uh, these list of this list of um, features. 
this this list can be more detailed, and of course there are many other subjects that can be covered. But uh, mostly we see uh, renewable energy, energy efficiency, water efficiency, waste reduction strategies, uh, recycling and reuse policies, and uh, strategies to protect and restore habitat. And uh, but uh, how do they come together? Uh, the rating systems usually uh, do this. Um, and sorry. And all green buildings are not the same. Um, there are many factors uh, uh, that affect the selection of these uh, strategies uh, during the design and construction uh, processes. Um, buildings look different and should look, look different in different climates, in different regions, uh, in different uh, cultures. The Im implementations to overcome the challenges will be different where there's a flood risk and where there's no rain at all, or when uh, the building is in a hot or cold climate zone. The uh, region affects the uh, selection of materials, maybe if the components are readily available or uh, and the economy of that uh, region. Culture affects, of course, how the uh, ideas are embraced or uh, refused by the users. And uh, of course, lifestyle uh, affects the consumptions. Uh, building types and ages are also important uh, in selecting these uh, strategies. And also, uh, in the end, the priorities define uh, what uh, strategies are going to be used. So all the green buildings uh, are different and they don't look the same and they don't um, apply the same principles, the same uh, criteria. So how can we compare them? Uh, there are green building certification systems, also known as rating systems. They are usually uh, point-based, but there are uh, other types as well. Um, uh, they award a certificate, uh, but they also uh, provide a roadmap uh, for the designers and the users. and uh, uh, they uh, they can be tools to provide guidance. Uh, they can cover different phases of the project. The design uh, they can cover the, only the design phase. They can cover the construction and uh, or uh, refurbishment phase, uh, the operation uh, phase, and uh, they can apply to all different types of building, different rating systems, different uh, certification systems apply to uh, different types of buildings. Some of them are only for homes. Some of them are uh, for uh, a broad range of uh, type of buildings. Um, and some can be implemented in larger scales, scales of development outside the buildings, such as neighborhoods, districts, communities, and even cities. So this list I uh, took from uh, the World Green Building so uh, Council website again. Uh, and these are uh, the uh, green building rating tools that are administered by a member Green Building Council. So these aren't all the green, green building certification systems, but uh, some of them. But as you can see, there are many, uh, many systems around the world. And some of them, like BREAM and LEED, are also uh, adapted to, uh, to certain, for example, this BREAM NL is uh, adapted to Netherlands. And, um, and about PASIFAS, where does PASIFAS uh, fit in here. Um, Passivhaus is not a green building rating system as the ones listed in the previous uh, slide. Uh, however, it's an energy performance standard which targets a very uh, high level of energy efficiency uh, while maintaining an indoor air quality and thermal comfort, which is one of the most important goals of uh, the holistic green building rating systems. And it is also possible for the buildings to be certified in different levels. So it is uh, some kind of a certification system in that uh, uh, because of that. So and uh, there are categories uh, in the previous session. Uh, they already talked about these, but there are uh, categories in like passive uh, standards. Uh, passive house classic plus or premium can be achieved uh, in the passive house uh, standard. And uh, NRFIT is for retrofits. Again, there are levels and. Uh, there's a low energy building standard for where uh, it is difficult to achieve the PASIFAS standard. Um, I would like to give some brief information about LEED, BREAM and PASIFAS right now. And uh, the, they were all uh, um, established in the uh, 90s, 1990s. Uh, first BREAM and PASIFAS and then LEED. 
Uh, all three have different certification schemes for uh, these different phases of the building life. Uh, LEED has got um, building design and construction, which also covers the major innovations with uh, small differences. BREAM has uh, uh, the new construction and the refurbishment schemes. And Passive House has, as I said, NR fit for the uh, retrofits and uh, Passive House for the uh, new build. Uh, buildings and uh, LEED and uh, BREAM also have operations uh, certification system which deals with uh, the, how uh, you operate the building not the construction or design but the policies you uh, use when you operate the building more more and um, so the uh, this is the certification methods and levels. And uh, LEED and BREAM are point-based certification systems. Uh, Passive House is a standard, as it's a standard, it's a pass and fail system. Uh, you either do it or you don't. And uh, both LEED and BREAM have uh, environmental impact categories, uh, which I will uh, show in the next slide. A project can get the necessary 40 points for, for the lowest level of LEED, for example, uh, from different uh, environmental impact categories. Uh, these are all out of uh, 100, these points. And uh, so accordingly, uh, according to the points you get, the, uh, the building will be certified. And So this is the environmental impact categories for BREAM and LEED. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, there's a broad range of environmental issues that they, they deal with. Uh, health and well-being, uh, energy uh, and uh, water efficiency, transport materials waste. Uh, these are common to uh, both certification systems. Uh, BREAM International has a more um, has a few more like management and pollution uh, system. Um, categories and they are all uh, the hundred points that the uh, as I said it's a point space point based system uh, the hundred point points are allocated between these environmental impact categories both in lead and bream uh, energy section being one of the uh, one with the highest point possibilities for example 32 33 points out of 100 are in the energy and atmosphere category in lead uh, the environmental section weightings in BREAM are a little bit different. Uh, they are they change according to the location. Uh, so each have prerequisite that each uh, certified building should achieve. Uh, so the areas they focus are similar uh, but still different, and the points are uh, different. Uh, that's why the same building can achieve different levels of certification from LEED and BREAM. And also, uh, uh, the, it can achieve different certifications, uh, uh, certification levels within the same system. Uh, so, uh, with both those certification systems, although the, uh, there are prerequisites to ensure a minimum improvement in the level of energy performance, uh, it, is it is possible to get a building certified with uh, focus on the other environmental issues rather than energy efficiency. Uh, so this, these two are scorecards from uh, two LEED Gold certified buildings with the same uh, rating system, LEED version 4. And uh, as you can see, one of, them is, uh, one of them achieved 25 points out of 33 uh, from the energy and atmosphere category. And one of them achieved 14 points out of 33. Uh, so uh, this one is located at a better uh, place. And this one is probably loco located at a remote area. So uh, all, both of them got uh, gold certification. Uh, this one with a higher energy efficiency uh, has got uh, six points, but this one has got 16 points, 66 points, but uh, uh, this one bet has a better performance in energy. So, but uh, it, this is not the case in the passive house. Uh, in, in passive house, because it focuses on uh, uh, energy efficiency and in indoor environmental quality. The concept is uh, only about five principles. Uh, it looks very simple and clear, but uh, uh, a great level of detail is required for passive house certification. But uh, in the end, it's um, uh, as Yasemin also uh, told in her presentation, uh, there are uh, 
criteria that you need to achieve to get a passive house. If you achieve it, you get it. If you don't, uh, you, you don't get the certification. So uh, it is all about uh, doing all um, all of these uh, to the uh, with a great detail, uh, checking them, the windows, the thermal insulation, the ventilation strategy, air tightness and thermal bridge redu reduced design. So these are all detailed uh, design decisions. So, um, and about the submittals, for example, the uh, some examples of passive house certification requires uh, much attention, uh, especially the construction the drawings. You need to submit the drawings at a one uh, per five uh, scale uh, or one per twenty scale. So it's very detailed uh, drawings, and mm, you need to design and give extra attention at the for the air tightness of the thermal envelope. Uh, excuse me, <clears throat> air tightness of the thermal envelope uh, during the. Uh, during the certification phase, uh, during the construction phase, sorry. So craftsmanship is also very important and you have to be present on site and see uh, every implementation. And at the end, <clears throat> to prove the air tightness, a blower door test is required. So it is all about construction. Passive House is uh, um, all about the design and the correct construction of the design. Um, <clears throat> Also, uh, in, for Windows, um, the certification requires verification of the precise installation thermal bridge C values. So these are not um, uh, the other certification systems, the <coughs> LEED and BREAM, uh, how they assess energy efficiency. There are, um, <coughs> uh, there are uh, they use the standard uh, ASHRAE, uh, ASHRAE standard 90.1. 2010, and uh, a, a reference building is modeled according to this standard and uh, a baseline building, and it is usually compared to this building. And the proposed design is also modeled uh, using dynamic simulation tools, and everything is uh, done uh, during the design phase. So you have the uh, uh, you have the uh, energy model in the design phase and uh, afterwards during the construction uh, there is there are other parties that should uh, the certification body doesn't really uh, uh, go into that much detail as in passive house about the construction quality of the uh, of the uh, building uh, so uh, BREEAM uses national calculation methodolo methodologies and uh, again ASHRAE standard. Uh, so if um, and Passive House uses PHPP as uh, Dave and Virgos uh, already told. And uh, so the uh, the the energy simulation programs are different. And however, uh, there has been a, a ruling about lead and passive house. Uh, the passive house buildings that can, uh, the lead buildings, lead uh, pursuing buildings that have already achieved or uh, achieved a passive house certification, the, this is for residential buildings, um, can achieve uh, these points uh, about between 10 and 15 points, these uh, percentages. 20 over ASHRAE 90.1 uh, 2010, uh, they can achieve this percentage of improvements, which corresponds to uh, 10 to 15 points from the energy efficiency uh, credits. So uh, although if uh, the passive house uh, criteria, the passive house components are modeled correctly in the uh, simulation, uh, these, these points go higher. So without the simulation, normally with only prescriptive compliance, uh, you can get six points or 10 points uh, for BREEAM uh, with energy efficient design features. Uh, but if you have a certified passive house and it is uh, residential uh, for this ruling for only the residential houses, uh, buildings, uh, you can get more points. So that's, uh, and uh, this is my last slide actually. This is about the, um, 
the certification quality assurance, uh, certification and quality assurance. LEED requires a commissioning agent to be on board from the design phase, and uh, all evidence are uploaded to LEED online and reviewed by a team of experts. Having a LEED AP and a team from the start is awarded with an additional point in the innovation category. So uh, you don't. Uh, nobody from uh, USGBC GBCI comes to the site and uh, sees how the uh, construction is done, or uh, nobody really. Uh, uh, the the uh, quality of construction is always the uh, role, uh, the duty of the uh, construction manager. And uh, BREAM awards points for having a commission process. So it's not mandatory always, but it's, it is mandatory for higher levels of certification. The licensed BREAM assessor performs site inspections. Uh, the, here in BREAM, there are some site in inspections and uh, prepares an assessment report. Uh, and BRE Global does the uh, quality assurance. Uh, and also there is a, a BREAM AP role uh, and it is awarded with additional points. Uh, Pacifas certification requires uh, all energy re relevant planning documents and technical data of the construction products and the complete Pacifas planning package calculation to be submitted. Uh, this is the same as uh, in LEED. The, you need to uh, uh, submit all uh, energy simulation output uh, and it is uh, reviewed by uh, an expert team there. Uh, however, these uh, the construction documents, the uh, detailed drawings, uh, you don't have to submit them. Uh, so uh, Pacifals certifier uh, also uh, gets involved before the start of construction. Uh, it is not compulsory, but uh, it is uh, better. And after completion of the construction, uh, the flow rate adjustment, it is like commissioning and uh, air tightness testing, which is like uh, Mlog commissioning, but uh, you, uh, the lead and Bream both have uh, these uh, commissioning requirements, uh, uh, but not as requirements, but additional points. Uh, the air tightness testing, uh, I'm talking about the envelope commissioning. And uh, so this envelope commissioning uh, and the result of the envelope commissioning doesn't affect if you get the certificate or not in the end. But uh, with Pacifas, you need to be uh, you need to achieve all of the criteria. So the air tightness testing is the uh, maybe the most uh, difficult one because you need to uh, achieve the air tightness uh, criteria uh, at the end of the construction. If you do it, uh, uh, you have the certification. And uh, site manager's uh, declaration is required for Pacifal certification that all the construction uh, documents are uh, implemented correctly. Uh, and optionally, the certifier can check the uh, execution of the construction work by performing site visits. I think this is also very important because uh, with uh, teams uh, that have less experience uh, with passive house, uh, it can be very uh, important that uh, the certifier can, uh, if, if the certifier sees the uh, implementations on the uh, on site. So uh, basically, it is uh, the LEED and BREAM or other, uh, most of the other certification systems have a broader view of uh, building. Uh, Passive House is more concentrated uh, on energy and uh, indoor environmental quality. And uh, so Passive House is also a building standard. So it's, uh, it checks how you build the building, uh, the quality of the building. Uh, in terms of uh, energy efficiency. And uh, this is the end of my presentation. Uh, I would like to thank Zero Build and CEPEV for this organization and uh, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Yasim. Thank you so much for this uh, brilliant and very in depth. Uh, analyzes all the certification systems. It was uh, great. Uh, we learned a lot. Uh, this session has been really uh, enlightening uh, our uh, listeners in many aspects, I believe. Uh, and I would like to uh, find out if uh, there are any questions or maybe listeners will have to digest all these uh, very intense uh, information we have been uh, sharing with them. Uh, so maybe in the uh, near future, you will receive some uh, questions. Uh, so I will just check. Uh, actually, um, 
at the beginning of the presentation, uh, I had also mentioned that uh, the, uh, our presentation subjects may uh, seem quite diverse, but uh, they are very intact and uh, they are uh, following just one uh, the other. And uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, at the end, after all these years, uh, I am delighted to be part of this family also, uh, because uh, seeing all the uh, thought behind it, all the work behind it, uh, it shows that you know, uh, everybody is working for a better, healthier, uh, and cleaner future. Uh, maybe uh, our uh, presenter speaker would like to ask any question to each other. What do you say? <laughs> uh, yes, I would love to um, to add something, if if possible. Definitely. Um, so, thank you very much for for the presentations. Uh, thank you, uh, Miss Arslan. It was uh, very uh, insightful to to see, um, well, to have an idea about different standards and uh, approaches uh, with regards to sustainability. So um, we at the Pasfels Institute salute every initiative that is going towards uh, the direction of a sustainable development. And this is BREAM and LEEDS and all other standards. Um, we, it, it is perfect. Um, we have, um, so putting everything into context, um, we know for a fact that roughly 40% of the entire energy consumption in Europe right now, uh, and I think this can be scaled to, to the entire world, so a little bit less than half of the entire energy consumption goes into heating and cooling our buildings and making them livable. So in, in this context, we believe that uh, energy performance it is um, and should be the highest uh, in um, importance. And uh, this is why our uh, our standard, the Pasfel standard, is energy performance based. And uh, the PHPP and all of this methodology is actually calculating the uh, with high accuracy how this building will behave, uh, how much energy will it need, and we are rewarding through the certificate uh, through energy performance. And the good part of of this story is that. Uh, together with energy performance comes also comfort. So we know from um, the comfort equations of Mr. Ole Fenger, a very well-renowned uh, researcher, um, that uh, what, which are the parameters under which uh, we feel most comfortable. So the Pasfel standard actually started uh, not necessarily from the energy efficiency point of view, but from the comfort point of view, how to make the most optimal comfort uh, and comfortable environment. So interpreting the Fenger equations for comfort, this is how the Pasfel standard was um, has started to develop itself. And as a byproduct, we have energy efficiency and not just energy efficiency, the highest energy efficiency level. So trying to uh, calculate and say we don't want any temperature asymmetry in the room, colder air down and um, hotter air up. This speaks for an air tightness level and speaks for a good um, uh, heat transfer coefficient of the walls, right? So uh, good lambda values. Um, when we have built that, we can actually control the comfort uh, inside with a ventilation unit that saves up to 90% of the energy we would lose by uh, ventilating in a normal way. So uh, energy efficiency is a side product from, from trying to reach the highest, uh, the highest comfort possible. Um, of course, other things like transportation, like uh, energy generation are, are important as well in the context of sustainability but we believe that energy efficiency should be first and then all the rest. And I thank you for, for the opportunity to speak. Thank you so much. We have a question uh, from our uh, audience. Uh, do you think that phase change materials have an important role in constructing green building? Is it to all of us? <laughs> Uh, it's a general because uh, change phase material, uh, of course, uh, it's uh, quite a specific 
uh, subject. Uh, I don't know who would like to uh, answer this question. That's why I'm asking to general. <laughs> if any of you have started working with phase change material. I, I would say that uh, phase change materials are good. Um, well required, not necessarily. So any uh, good insulating material is uh, um, uh, can be used for building an energy efficient house, not necessarily phase change materials. I think they are more of a hype uh, than, uh, than the right solution to be applied on a massive scale because of the costs involved and, uh, and the industry behind it. Um, they are good to have for i don't know space age uh, type of buildings yeah. but uh, i don't think they will they will be developed on a massive scale so their role uh, in the entire picture of energy efficiency is not that big yeah, my understanding is that in a context of a passive house we we tend to be reducing the diurnal swings the internal temperature changes quite a lot just by having good insulation and then so that i think that reduces the need for them anyway doesn't it Thank you so much. And we have another question. Uh, actually, this year in 2020, uh, at the uh, education, uh, we had uh, PHPP and PH uh, design uh, two days within the whole uh, edu uh, training uh, calendar. Uh, yet, uh, most of the students uh, do not use SketchUp yet. So, uh, are there going to be any future uh, training only uh, concentrating separately maybe uh, yes the theoretical and conceptual part and also uh, the software part where maybe some sketchup is uh, first uh, introduced so people warm up to that and then uh, introducing phpp and uh, ph design too everybody is curious about this there are quite a few questions about that <laughs> Uh, so okay. I, I think uh, um, the course provider um, and in general the course providers are flexible enough to to offer such uh, added uh, modules and um, mm -hmm. um, if uh, if there is anything that we can do to 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 help we are eager to uh, to do it so I think you can share our email address to to the <laughs> ones who are actually interested in this and we could organize something. Okay, that may be hectic. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> no, it may um, sure. I would also add that ketchup is something you can very easily learn in your own time. There's a, an awful lot of online resources, most of it free. Um, so maybe the way to go is just to for the course providers to give some guidance about what SketchUp skills are required as a baseline yeah. and then give participants yeah. time to catch up before doing the, the, the taught part about the energy efficiency and energy modeling. Maybe, yeah, maybe it would be also uh, quite uh, feasible to uh, uh, tell the uh, people who are going to get this training that you know, a few weeks ahead, if they just uh, peek in the YouTube and uh, look a bit to sketch up so uh, they have knowledge and then uh, it will be much easier and more efficient maybe in the uh, training session to uh, spend more time on PHPP and uh, PH design, of course. Uh, and then there's another question. This is not about the training part, but this is about the uh, practice part of it. Uh, uh, is there any kind of uh, service the institute is providing for design PH? I mean, uh, architects or engineers, uh, they will be uh, designing, uh, they will be uh, coming up with concepts, but uh, whatever uh, parameter uh, is collected will be uh, submitted to someone uh, and uh, that person is going to take care of the design PH part and then uh, come back with the results. Maybe, you no, know, this is a transition period. And uh, of course, the younger uh, designers uh, will catch up very easily. But you no, know, people like us who are a bit more intermediate, uh, we may need uh, some more support <laughs> and backup. <laughs> sure. So for for support, we have a, a, a structured um, forum. So mm. everybody who buys the MPH license has access to to forum and implicitly to us because we mm. are the ones who are trying to help people and answer their questions. 
uh, this is one way of, of uh, making progress with design pH. Uh -huh. um, for such services uh -huh. of uh, practically this, um, drawing a building in uh, SketchUp and analyzing it, um, we, we can also do it because we are a service-based um, institution, uh, but this uh -huh. would require an additional fee, of course, for, for our efforts. So mm -hmm. if you have questions regarding how to work with design pH, we have manual and forum. Um, mm -hmm. There you, we can help you do it yourself. And if you want us to do it, we can do it happily, but we will have to charge a fee. Yeah, yeah we would really like to encourage all, all potential users to learn design pH themselves because that's sure. really where it came from for architects to con take control of the energy performance of their own designs and not outsource it to a consultant because then they, they get a much deeper understanding by going through the process themselves. Um, but yeah, if it's your first time trying to do a passive house design, maybe find a, a consultant who is more confident and, and work together with them, either the institute or, or, or somebody more local. Into your area. Thank you so much. Uh, these are the questions. Uh, so far, as I said, uh, our uh, audience will be digesting and uh, sending you their further questions. Uh, and uh, is there anyone who would like to uh, give their last uh, words? And then we can uh, close this session. And it's uh, 20 past 2 Turkish time. And we are on time with our session. So everybody is fine, I guess, and uh, no last words. <laughs> okay, then I'm closing for today. And thank you so much you. Uh, for all your uh, efforts and uh, your uh, very good presentations. Uh, it has been a really, really uh, very enlightening session. Uh, and I'm very delighted to have hosted you here today. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.